Hello, everyone, and welcome to the last section of derivatives, where we're going to use derivatives to compute limits. And this is a very, very important section, like all of them, of course, uh, because after learning about hospital rule, you will now be able to compute every single limit in this course without using the numerical method. So by the numerical method, after hospital rule, after this section, every single limit question that you're going to go and revisit. In the good old days, when we used to use the numerical method, you will now do it an algebraic way, or you will apply uh, hospital rule in order to uh, compute it. So no longer any guessing. So what is hospital rule? So the hospital rule is a, a rule that will allow you to compute limits that are called bad quotient. So um, if you have a limit of the form zero over zero or infinity over infinity up to a sign, you will be able to apply hospital rules. So let me just read the definition first. So suppose omega is plus or minus infinity or zero. Suppose you have a point inside an interval. And suppose you have two functions where you can compute their derivatives uh, on that interval. Maybe not at A, actually A does not really matter because it goes around it by using, of course, the Holy Old Principle. Anyways, so if your limit for F as X approaches A is plus or minus omega, and same thing for G, so if the limit as X approaches A for G of X is equal to plus or minus omega, where omega is either the infinite or zero, then if you compute the limit of uh, f of x over g of x as x approaches a, it's going to be the exact same thing as the limit as x approaches a of f prime over g prime. So you are allowed only in a limit setup, you are allowed to compute the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator and construct this new equation and compute the new limit. And if that limit exists, then it's the same as the original limit. So be careful, we're not computing the derivative of the, the equation inside here is if you have a limit of the form zero over zero or infinity over, over infinity. So only in a limit setup, you're allowed to differentiate above and differentiate below. So don't confuse uh, hospital rule with quotient rule. It's two different things. So a bunch of remarks. So remember, this is very, very crucial. You can only apply hospital rule if you have something of the form zero over zero or infinity over infinity up to a sign. For the other ones, like um, zero uh, times infinity, infinity minus infinity, zero to the power of zero, one to the power of infinity, or infinity to the power of zero, uh, we will be able to use hospital rule, but only after you manipulate your expression so that you can recover one of the bad quotient. Uh, so we will be able to deal with all of them, okay, f with all the limits that we are uh, facing in this in, in this uh, in this section in this course in general. Uh, even if the statement is written for two side limits, this works for one side limits. So going from a uh, for x going going to a plus or x going to a minus, and it also works for limits going to the infinite. So as x goes to infinity or x goes to minus infinity. And again, and again, and again, after hospital rule, bye bye the numerical method. Bye bye. We're, that's it. We're done. Okay. All right. Let's go do some examples. First example, the one I call flushing factorization. So flushing factorization. That example is an example that you can normally do using factorization. But now we're going to do it using hospital rule. And at the end of the day, you can do whatever you want. If you're a big fan of factor, of doing factorization, you're, you're very special. Okay. But you can do it. But now there's another way. So anyways, let's compute the limit as x approaches two of x squared minus three x plus two over three x squared minus x minus 10. So the first thing you do when you have a limit is you plug your two inside your x. So let's replace every single x by x by two. So you get two squared minus three times two plus two, which gives you zero. And down there you get three times two squared minus two minus 10, which gives you zero over zero. So that's a bad limit. Okay. So we have a bad limit zero over zero. So now we have, we have the, the green light. So if we are computing the limit as x approaches two of that expression, we can apply a spital rule. So what we're allowed to do now is create this new limit. 
So you construct this new limit where you differentiate the top. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of minus 3x is minus 3. And the derivative of plus 2 is 0 over the derivative of 3x squared, which is 6x. The derivative of minus x, which is minus 1. And the derivative of minus 10, which is 0. And now you replace your x by 2 again. So you get 2 times 2 minus 3 over 6 times 2 minus 1. Get 4 minus 1 minus 3, which is 1, and 2 times 6 minus 1, which is 11. So you get 1 over 11. And here, I want, I want you to really notice that if you do it the good old way, so as a remark here, so if you are factoring this expression, uh, x squared minus 3x plus 2 can be factored as x minus 2 times x minus 1, and 3x squared minus x minus 10 can be factored as x minus 2 times 3x plus 5. The x minus 2, they cancel perfectly. I'm applying here the holy whole principle. And then you're getting this brand new expression. You replace x by 2, 2 minus 1 over 2 times 3 plus 5 gives you 1 over 11. So here, these two limits, they're absolutely the same. So if you are if you are still a big fan of doing factorization, do it. I don't care. But uh, computing derivatives in general is slightly easier. All right, let's do, <coughs> oops, sorry, let's do another example. All right, let's do the next one where I call it, I call this one, they all have names, not all of them, regurgitating rationalization. So this is an example where you can do it using rationalization, but now we have more tools in our backpack, okay? And that tool being a hospital rule. So let's compute the limit as x goes to 16 of root of x minus 4 over x squared minus 256. So I'm going to replace all the x's by 16. So root of 16 minus 4, boom, you get 0. 16 squared minus 2 uh, minus 256, you get zero again so you get zero over zero so here we go okay so our limit now can be done using hospital rule so the numerator so i'm computing the derivative here so the numerator derivative of root of x is one over two root of x and the derivative of x squared minus 226 that's just 2x so i have the green light to differentiate above and below. So now I'm going to simplify this. I'm going to bring the two x upstairs. So this is the same thing as the limit as x approaches 16 of one over two times two. Let's just simplify all of this. So you get four x root of x. Now, if you replace x by 16, you're going to get one over four times 16 times root of 16. The root of 16 is 4 times 4 times 16, that's 2, 26. So you get 1 over 2, 26. And again here, fun remark. So if you are doing this, so because you have a 0 over 0 question and you have a radical term, you can multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the radical term, so root of x plus 4. Um, when you foil the numerator, you're going to get root, you're going to get x minus 16. The denominator, which is x squared minus 256, can be factored as a difference of squared as x minus 16 times x plus 16 uh, times, of course, the root of x plus 4. And now the x minus 16, they cancel perfectly. You get a brand new expression. You replace x by 16, and you get 1 over 256 again. So again, here, I really want to stress the fact that you have a choice now, okay, you can use hospital rule or you can uh, use your good old ways and you're going to be successful in computing those limits. But now to some extent, you could argue, well, why are we learning something that does the same thing as, that does give us the same result as before, even if it's a different way, like hospital rule is actually more powerful and you will see this with the next example. Ah, uh, the next example is really that beyond step. The example that even if you're super good at doing algebra, factorization, rationalization, whatever. Okay, suppose you, you are the king or the queen or whatever in between of, uh, of algebra. There's some questions you cannot do algebraically. So this next example, if you're trying to compute the limit as x approaches 1 of ln of x over x minus 1, 
if you replace x by 1, you're going to get ln of 1 over 1 minus 1, which is 0 over 0. And here is 1. It does not matter what you do. You cannot simplify this. You're stuck. Okay, you have a 0 over 0. So here you have no choice to apply hospital rule in order to do that one. So if you apply the rule here, the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. And the derivative of x minus 1 is just 1. Now, if you replace x by 1, you get 1 over 1 over 1, which is, of course, just 1. So here, very short and sweet. And uh, I could write the remark, but before with tables, you would need two table, um, one that goes, that gets, that gets closer to 1 on the right side, one that gets closer to 1 to the left side. You would need at least three values on both sides in order to guess the proper limit to the left and right. Compare, check that they're the same, and it works. If you go and you try to guess that one again, around 1, you will get that your best guess is 1. But now it's no longer a guess. It's a result, and we get 1. This is the next example. It's very similar. Uh, we want to compute the limit as x goes to infinity of 1000x plus 999 over e to the x. If the first thing you do is you replace x by infinity, you get 1000 times infinity plus 999, which is infinity, over e to the power of e to the infinity, which is infinity, infinity over infinity. It's bad, but it's not too bad in the sense that you can do it using hospital rules. So now this, this limit can be transformed using hospital rule into the following limit. So you differentiate above and below, so you get the limit as x approaches infinity of 10,000, uh, of, a, of a thousand, so 1000x thousand goes to 1000, 999 goes to zero, and the of ex is ex. Now if you plug your infinity, you get a thousand over e to the power of infinity, which is infinity. So 1,000 over infinity, any number over plus or minus infinity is zero. So here, even if you're good at factorization, rationalization, there's no way you can simplify this limit algebraically. You could guess it with a table, with numbers getting bigger and bigger. But now with hospital rule, this is no longer a guess. It's a computation. Thank you, derivatives. Thank you, hospital rule. We know this limit is zero. Boom. All right, let's finish the sequence of bad quotient with my last example that I called, oops, I did it again. Again, I'm sure nobody will understand why I'm singing like this. But anyways, I miss her so much. Anyways, so here we go. So we want to do the example, oops, I did it again. So we want to compute the limit as x approaches zero of x times ex minus x over e to the power x squared minus 1. Again here, if the first thing you do is you replace all the x's by 0, you get 0 times e to the 0 minus 0, which is 0, over e to the power 0 squared, which is e to the 0, which is 1, minus 1, which gives you 0. 0, or zero, oh, zero over 0, of course, it's bad. So we have the green light now. So 0 over 0 is kind of fun now. Okay, so now you can just apply hospital rule to create this brand new limit as x approaches zero. So here be careful. Um, the first term is a product. You're multiplying x times ex. So I'm going to use a product rule here for the first term. So you're going to get the derivative of x, which is 1, times the second function, plus the first function, times the derivative of the second one, minus the derivative of x, minus x, sorry, which is minus 1, over and down there, we have e to the power of something, so we have a chain rule, so we get e to the power of x squared times the inside derivative, which is 2x, and the derivative of minus 1 is just minus 1. So let's clean this up a bit. It's very important with hospital rule question to simplify if possible. So you get the limit of ex plus x, ex minus 1, over 2x, e to the x squared. Now, what happens if you replace x by 0? You get e to the power of 0 plus 0 e to the power of 0 minus 1. e to the 0 is 1 plus 0. It's 1 minus 1, which is 0. Hmm. What's going to happen here? Now, you get 2 times 0 over 2 times 0 e to the power of 0 squared. e to the power of 0 squared is e to the power of 0, which is 1 times 0 times 2. It's 0. Oh, no. Oh, no.
So what do we do when we get e to the power, uh, when you get zero over zero again? So remember here, the idea is that um, the hospital rule transforms your question into a brand new one. And if you get zero over zero again, or infinity over infinity again, then this new limit can potentially be solved using hospital rule. So what we have to do here is keep the faith in the method and apply hospital rule again. Okay, so here we go again. So we apply hospital rule. So this brand new limit will become a brand new other limit. So here, applying hospital rule. So here's my new limit. So you get the limit as x approaches zero. Sort of of ex is ex. X times ex, that's my product rule again. So I'm just going to write it down so we know it's going to be ex plus x ex. It's the same, it's the same operation. So derivative of ex of x ex is ex plus x ex. Derivative of minus one is just zero. Down there, two x times ex squared. Uh, that's an, that's another product rule. So derivative of two x is just two times e to the power of x squared plus two x times the derivative of e to the power of, of x squared, which is e to the power of x squared times the inside. This is a small chain rule here to x. And now let's hope that this works now. So if you replace x by zero, you get e to the power of zero, which is one, plus e to the power of zero, which is another one, plus zero times e to the power of zero. So the numerator becomes two. What about the denominator? So you get two times e to the power of zero squared, plus two times zero, e to the power of zero squared times two times zero. So you're going to get two times one plus zero, which is two, and two over two, that's just zero. Yay, okay, so another, oh my God, fail, not zero. Okay, you, you won't see this at least. Two over two, which is one, Shh. okay, it's our little secret. Okay, so two over two. Uh, gives you one. So here you had to do hospital rule twice, okay, in order to get to your answer. And this is typical. Um, you're, you're dealing with a limit of the form zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Uh, you apply the rule. If you get that same problem, you apply it again. Okay, so and sometimes you need to apply it again and again and again until you're done with the question. All right, so uh, for this first video on hospital rule, uh, the idea is fairly simple. If you have a limit of the form z over zero or infinity over infinity, you have the green light to use the rule. So those are bad quotients. You, are, you have a green light to differentiate above, differentiate below. Not quotient rule here. It's different. It's hospital rule. It's a limit computation. So you are allowed to differentiate above, differentiate below. Of course, if above or below, you have a product, a quotient, or or chain rule, you do, the rules are properly, but it's really two questions into the same question. So you create this new limit and you reevaluate. Most of the time you will get your answer. If not, you will get a new question where maybe you'll need to apply the rule again. All right, for this video, that's it, that's all. Bye-bye,